Figuring out which watercolor supplies to invest in can be really overwhelming, especially for beginners. It feels like there are a million different options for paint, brushes, paper, and palettes. And let's be honest, watercolor supplies are not cheap. In this video, I'll walk you through my top supply recommendations for watercolor artists of any level. Whether you're a complete beginner or someone who's been painting for years, I'll talk about how to find the best options for your painting style, your experience, and your budget. Let's start with watercolor paper. And just so you know, everything I mention in this video will be linked down below in the description box in the order that I mention them. Now, the type of watercolor paper you choose can really impact the outcome of your artwork. And when you're looking for watercolor paper options, there are some common terms you'll likely hear, and those are cold press, hot press, and 100% cotton. So just to quickly review those terms if you're not already familiar with them, cold press paper typically has kind of a rougher textured surface, hot press paper is completely smooth, and then 100% cotton paper just refers to the very high quality professional grade paper, and that can be either cold press or hot press. This type is a lot pricier than student grade paper, but it's kind of the gold standard for professional artists, and once you get used to painting on 100% cotton paper, there's really no turning back. It's an amazing surface to paint on, and it just allows you to do a lot more. And my absolute favorite type of paper is the Legion Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press 100% cotton paper. I purchased the 9x12 pads on Amazon, but they do have a variety of sizes. I also have this 12x16 pad that I used for my tropical collection, and it's just top notch. My second favorite is Arches, and I think the correct pronunciation is actually something like Arsh, but I'm probably butchering that. That's um, also 100% cotton cold press paper, and it's a brand that a lot of watercolor artists prefer. I also really like it, but since I'm so used to painting on Legion paper, I find that Arches is a little bit more of a textured surface, so it just takes a little bit of getting used to for me. But if you're looking for 100% cotton paper, professional grade paper, you'll really be good to go with Legion or Arches, and both can be found on Amazon. And if you're a complete beginner, one of the most accessible, affordable brands is Canson XL, and that's student grade paper. That's actually the brand that I started out using for two years before I made the switch over to professional grade paper, and the nice thing about that is that you can really just feel free to experiment and practice new techniques and just be free without feeling like you're wasting money on the expensive paper when you're just practicing. I also recommend the Fabriano Studio 25% cotton paper for beginners. It's a great intermediate paper if you're not quite ready to make the jump to 100% cotton. So to recap, my top recommendations for watercolor paper would be Legion Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press, Arches Cold Press, those are both professional grade, and then for student grade, either Canson XL or Fabriano 25%. Let's move on to watercolor brushes. So I do actually have a whole other YouTube video that talks all about watercolor brushes, but I'll link that up here. I exclusively use Princeton Artist brushes, and my recommendations are really based on what you're using those brushes for. So for loose style painting, which is what I primarily do, I absolutely 100% recommend the Princeton Neptune brushes. Those have super thirsty bristles, which means they can hold a lot of water and pigment, which is perfect for loose style painting. The size 8 and 12 round brushes are my personal go-tos, but they have tons of options to choose from. For everyday painting, not necessarily loose or detailed, the Princeton Velvet Touch brushes will be one of your best options. They have medium stiffness, they maintain their shape really well, and as a bonus, the handles feel very luxurious. If you're just getting started with watercolor and you're not quite sure what your style is yet, I definitely recommend these Velvet Touch brushes. My go-tos are size 2, 4, and 8. As far as pricing goes, these are very high quality brushes, so of course you could find cheaper options out there, but I do find that your brush quality makes a significant impact on the outcome of your paintings. So if you're not looking to invest too much money into brushes all at once, that's totally fine, but I would recommend maybe investing in just one or two of the Princeton brushes to start with. One brush really goes a long way, so they'll last you a long time. Moving on to watercolor paint. Uh, this is where it gets a little tricky. There are so many choices and variations in paint, and a lot of it really just depends on artist preference. So I'll share my thoughts based on my own personal experience. 
My top recommendation is Daniel Smith Extra Fine Professional Watercolors. They are expensive, they're professional grade, but let me tell you, these tubes last forever, it feels like. And I especially love their selection of greens. My go-tos are sap green, deep sap green, hooker's green, and indigo. That's usually my go-to mixture when I'm painting leaves and greenery. And I actually painted a whole collection of tropical plants using these colors, including a really big 22 by 30 monstera leaf painting, and I still have over half of the tubes left. So a little bit really goes a long way. I linked my personal favorite greens down below, and as always, you can find them on Amazon. My second recommendation in the professional paint arena is the Mimary Blue. These are very high quality Italian watercolors, and they're super vibrant and beautiful. You can buy them as tubes. They also have a few palettes. This one on the screen is one of my favorites. Again, these aren't cheap, but there's a reason for that. They're very high quality, just like Daniel Smith. And I couldn't talk about watercolor paint without giving a shout out to the Art Philosophy Watercolor Confections palettes. These aren't the highest quality, they're not the most sought after professional paints, but I got these palettes when I very first started painting in 2018. I've used them heavily, and they still have lasted all these years later. Of course, the colors that I do use most often are starting to reach their end, but let me tell you, these palettes are pretty darn affordable. They can be found on Amazon, and I'll link them below. They're vibrant, and the best part is they're already mixed into beautiful colors, so you can just open it up and start painting. I highly recommend these, especially if you're just getting started, and each palette usually ranges somewhere between $20 to $25. Now on to watercolor palettes, and you can really feel free to use whatever you'd like for a palette, but I do recommend trying to use either a ceramic or a porcelain surface because those are a lot easier to clean and they don't stain like a lot of the plastic ones do. My most cherished palette is this Tierney Ray Painter's Palette from Pottery by Eleni. It's absolutely beautiful, it has this gold rim, and it has a very large space for mixing colors, so it's a pretty addition to my studio while also being very functional. I also recommend these little nesting palettes that I got on Amazon several years ago. These are great because they stack nicely, they don't take up too much space, and you can really keep your colors separate if you're not a fan of messy palettes or really mixing your colors too much. You could also just go to a thrift store or a homeware store and just pick up any sort of ceramic serving dish or plate. Those work perfectly fine as well. I got this one from Target and it's been great so far. So there really are a lot of great options for palettes. It just kind of depends on your preference, your budget, and how much space you have in your studio. So we've already covered paper, we covered brushes, paint, and palettes, but there are a couple of miscellaneous supplies that I use pretty heavily that I wanted to mention as well in case you're interested in checking them out. First is this Holbein masking tape. I'll also link this below. It's a bit more expensive than regular masking tape, but it's very gentle, and I've never had any problems with it ripping or damaging the surface of my paper when I peel it. This is especially great if you like to get those clean borders on your landscape paintings or if you're doing sketchbook paintings. And I've also never had any issues with my watercolor paint seeping underneath this type of masking tape like I sometimes get when I'm using regular cheap masking tape. I also use these Fiskars paper trimmers all the time. As I mentioned earlier, I usually get 9 by 12 inch watercolor paper pads, but I like to paint either 5 by 7 or 8 by 10, so I'm always using these to trim down my papers, and I also use them for creating my greeting cards that I sell. These have both held up really well over the years, and it's always nice when your supplies don't take up too much space. So there you have it. I know that was a lot of information, but just remember every artist has their own preferences and their own experiences with supplies. Those are just my personal recommendations based on what I use. Again, all of those supplies will be linked down below in the description box, and I made sure to put them in the order that I mentioned them so it's a little easier to find. If you do have any questions or you have other supply recommendations, please make sure to leave them in the comments down below. I always love hearing what other artists use and I like trying new supplies too. So let me know and thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in another one very soon.